Hello, sportsmen. Hey, spring is here. It's here officially. You can feel it in the air. We've gotten more requests this year and more questions about smelt dipping. You know that feature we did? In fact, we did this back in 1992 of catching smelt during the day on a secret little stream. Well, we're going to revisit that smelt feature. A lot of people want to see it. They're curious. I'm going to give you some tips on how to find a stream like that. You stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost with tips on how you can become a more practical sportsman. I don't know what to say. Pete Berger said he thought we were too late. Smelt had been in the streams a week ago, but for the past two days, nothing. He said we could walk down to a little upper peninsula creek that used to be good in years past, but he didn't hold out much hope today. Oh, I see him in there now. Yeah. You can go right up ahead of me and that next place. Oh, yeah, they're bunched in there. This way I always get Maybe it's fine, huh? Oh! Oh, Peter! My, my, look at this! Well, once again, we hit it. Yep. I can't believe this. <laughs> During the day... Oh, tasty little things. Oh, Pete is going to get back in there, I can tell. There they are. You all set? Sure. Look at that. Now, while he's emptying that, I'm going to go in for a dip. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Pete, we're going to be done here in just a, just a few seconds. Yep. Smelt dipping during the day, not something you can count on, but when you find it, it's fabulous. I think more of them are down here a little farther. Oh, I just... Happy. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. There's some nice ones in here, too. Oh, yeah. This is still early for the run in this respect. Most of the time, when you get near the end of the end of the run, the, the smelt are a lot bigger. There you get them big males. Mm -hmm. That's a small one. That's a small one right there. Remember how I kept the big one? Oh yeah. yeah. That's a small one. Now that's a male right there, you can. Yeah. Huh. A male smelt. Let's see what else we got in here. Small that's a male. Smelt. When I squeezed the belly and whitish milt came out, the smelt was a male. If a few eggs appeared, I'd know it was a female. These all appear to be males. I wonder if they all are. These are all males. We could have filled our buckets right here, but downstream, the smelt were even thicker. This is unbelievable. We, we were just dipping upstream there, got this bucket full, and there weren't, weren't a smidgen of the smelt that there are right here. Wow. What do you think, John? You want me to go in and take a dip full? Yeah, let's try it. Look at them up there in that, uh, ahead of that log. Well, I'll sneak in here. They'll probably scatter a little bit, but... Oh, this is going to be obscene smelt dipping. Oh, this is just... Can you imagine at night when they're in here? There we go. Oh, there is a, a net full of smelt. Oh my goodness. I tell you, but you know, this is enough smelt right here. Look at them scattering all through here. This is enough smelt here as far as I'm concerned for, for the year for me and my family. But I don't need it. I have more than that in the bucket. So I'm gonna practice catch and release. You know, if you don't need them, why keep them? Look at that. I wouldn't mind getting a, dipping a master angler smelt here if I could find one. Something for our trophy awards. But there don't seem to be any huge ones. Oh, a few of them left in the net. This is something else. But look, they just keep right on coming and moving right up through. The smelt weren't really running right now like they do at night. They were holding their positions in the stream. The spawning activity begins after dark. Well, they're thick in here, Pete. Yep. Pete, look at here. Pete's bucket is empty now, but that'll change in a flash. You can probably get those right down there. Are you ready? Two minutes. Yeah. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see any more? That's a five-gallon pail full. 
Guys got any containers to put them in? No, we. I, this is plenty for us, Pete. I mean, we really don't need okay. all that many. But look at that. That's, for a lot of people, that's a whole night's dipping right there in that one. Oh. There they go. That was just about a full of metal. No kidding, it sure was. Almost a five-gallon tail for I don't know really how many more we need. I can get some more right in here. Right there you can go. Yeah. Walk in with your, uh, hey? Yeah. Right? Walk in with your dippers and go ahead there. And you'll be in shallow water. Oh, yeah. This is something else up here, John. Make it right down. Yeah, this is, th this is thicker with smelt, and I'm closer to them than I've ever been. Even when we did that dipping before. This is going to be something else. Oh, man. I don't know what to say, but this is definite overindulgence in smelt. Huh? Yeah, well, I guess... Why don't you take a picture of this, Tim? How, how much do we need, John? I think we have enough. I mean, how much do you need, Tim? Do, do, do we need this dip? We don't need it? I tell you, some of you folks that wished you had smelt like this, and I'm gonna put them back for you. There they go. Wow. Yeah, maybe we'll get a few more. Yeah, we'll take a few more. I remember dipping too many smelt. Tim Farragan remembers years when he brought home more than he cared to clean. So this year, we were prudent and practical about how many we wanted to take home. Sure, they're loaded in the stream right now. Sure, they're easy to dip. There's no limit. And sure, we might not see this again for years, maybe never again, but that's no excuse for being a fish or game hog. You know, at times like this, you have to ask yourself, why do I hunt and fish? Why am I here? Is it to take everything I can up to the limit just because I can? Well, I wanted to take a dip or two like this just to see what it was like, but none of us needed that many more smelt. Pete Berger told us that he had some friends, though, who wanted more smelt, so we should at least fill up our bucket. But there was no point in taking more than that because, in all likelihood, they'd spoil before anybody cleaned them. And to me, conservation is wise use of what's available, but not overuse. That's a bucket full. If nobody finds out where this little Upper Peninsula stream is, the smelt will be there during the day next year. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm not telling. Everybody wants to know where that little creek was. Well, I can't tell you. I could tell you. I'm not going to tell you because it would ruin it. It would ruin it for several reasons. But I will show you how to find a place like that. Go to a, an atlas and gazetteer here on the back. Well, I will show you we were in this area here, section 91, around Manistique. That's the general area we were. If you open up the map book, you can find lots of little creeks. Up here at the top, here's three of them that come in. Uh, look down here along the, uh, well, into the Garden Peninsula. A number of creeks. Now that white area right near the shore, that is private land. The green area designates public land. Find the bridges that cross these creeks and you just have to check them because those smelt aren't there all the time, but that's the way to get them during the day. Check the bridges, make sure you're on public land. Uh, good luck to you and of course get a good smelt recipe and you'll be real happy with the results. The traditional way to cook smelt is to fry them, and they're really hard to beat that way. But William Wiswell from Grand Rapids sent us a recipe he calls Smelt Melt. That's a unique way to use these little critters. He starts with a pound and a half of smelt. He removes the fins and the backbones. Then he steams them until the flesh flakes apart. Or if you have home canned smelt, just drain them off. Don't steam them. They're already cooked. Flake that delicate smelt in a bowl. Add three tablespoons of diced celery, three tablespoons of diced red onion, three tablespoons of Miracle Whip, two teaspoons of prepared mustard, a little salt, pepper, and oregano. Now mix that up, spread it on slices of toast, top it with some slices of mozzarella cheese, 
put it on a cookie sheet, pop it into a preheated 375 degree oven until the cheese melts. I mean, who wouldn't like this? You can find Bill Wiswell's Smelt Melt in the upcoming Outdoor Digest magazine or print it off our website, www.fredtrost.com. If you don't fill your nets with smelt this season, and rarely is smelt dipping that easy, you can prepare smelt melt with canned salmon, tuna, or other canned fish. But try it. It's a great way to serve some of the fish you catch. Six months ago, I was the guy who said, I got no use for the internet. I don't even know what it was. Now I can't live without it. You should get yourself a computer and get on dial up www.fredtrost.com. That's our address. You will see on the screen this website. This is what we've been working on frantically. Uh, this has a ton of information in it. It's an, a clearinghouse of practical information for sportsmen. Now, this along the left-hand side here is the menu of the first pages you can jump to. For example, if you want to look at TV show, go down here at the bottom and just click on TV show. This will take you uh, to another menu here. It, okay, pick this week's transcripts and pick the public TV show. This will give you a transcript, a word-for-word -word transcript of what was on the air. This is of March 19th. You scroll down through here. I mean, you got the whole thing. My pledge breaks the whole nine yards. Uh, so this is, you can print this off. You can have the information, see exactly what I said. Uh, we have many other things here that you can go to. The guide reports, Matt Radzilowski's notes on the guide reports. Uh, recipes, go to Fish and Game Recipes. You'll find the recipes that we have here, the one for this week, although we have just set up this data, database and we're going to go to venison finger rolls because it has the picture in it. This is how they're all going to be with pictures in the future. But once again, you can print off the recipes. In time here, we're going to have hundreds of recipes, if not thousands, on this database. You got to get online. You got to get the internet, dial up our website. You can not only read here what Professor Fins and Mark Raymond says, and you can see if it matches what they say on the show. 20's time. Hunters day, ask Mark yeah, Raymond a lot of questions about keeping their hunting dogs healthy. But here's a question about human health as well. I'm concerned about my dog picking up deer ticks and transmitting Lyme disease. What should I do? Lyme disease is a problem in Michigan, but nothing that's running rampant. The deer ticks are out there. You have to be careful. Check your dog over when you come back in from running. If you've got a short-haired dog, check them over for ticks when you get back in. But the deer tick is a very small tick, very hard to see. The best thing to do if you're concerned about this, they have a vaccination out there, a vaccine that is a two-step process. You give them their first shot, and then two weeks later, the second one, and they're good for another year. You give them an annual booster after that. So if you want to protect your dog, use that. The best advice I can give you is to contact your vet if you're concerned about this, get the shots for the Lyme disease, protect him for that, and find out what other new products that they may have out on the market today. Your vet would be able to help you on that to select what products are right for you and protect you and your dog. There you go. Now that's, that's the kind of fish we're supposed to be catching, guys. Charlie? No! People are funny when it comes to fish, especially when they can't catch them. They tend to say it's because the fish outsmarted them. But hold it, we're talking about a cold-blooded fish. Even though they travel in schools, I've never seen a fish read or write. I asked Professor Fins what he thought. Are fish really smart? I think that they uh, have such a small degree of uh, smartness that's almost unmeasurable. Uh, they have basic instincts and basic patterns that they go after which the environment teaches them to do. So it's up to the fisherman that is the one that's up to be smart. The fish isn't smart. It's up to the fisherman to, to uh, be smart and learn that environment and learn those basic instincts and those patterns that the fish have and then duplicate that. Uh, the fish doesn't know what a hook is. Uh, I have what uh, my granddaughter calls a magic hook. It's just a, a gold-plated hook. And four or five, six inch bluegill is usually off a dock, just a plain gold plated hook jigged with no bait, anything added to it. Uh, my daughter or my uh, granddaughter has caught as many as uh, 25, 40 bluegills in a half an hour of time right off the dock, but nothing more than a gold hook. 
in the same way with trout sometimes. Just the, just the movement and the flash, and there isn't a fish around that knows what a hook is. And don't worry if people tell you to hide the hook in the bait, and like, like that, make sure the tip is covered. Forget it. Fish has no idea what a hook is. Now that I've done with law school, I've taken the bar exam, it's time to dig into some of the issues that I think sportsmen ought to be more aware of. We call this section of the show In the News, because I'm going to be commenting on things that come up in the newspaper that you read about. For example, got this news release not long ago about the assault weapons ban, unconstitutional in California. Now this is a major major news item that should be discussed. Of course, in this state, we have the Self-Protection First Armed Society. This was in the Lansing State Journal. Cropsey's bill to uh, loosen up on the concealed weapon permit process. Of course, uh, some of the articles come out saying that the residents oppose the guns, but when you look at the letters to the editors, <laughs> it seems to be overwhelmingly pro-concealed weapons. Uh, of course, we have the bovine TB problem, how that's being handled by the DNR, need to comment on that. Here we have tree stands, win okay for deer, bear firearm hunters. Um, sportsmen, you don't know the whole story on that yet. Nobody does. Heritage deer season, this is something that is being proposed right now uh, for black powder, primitive weapons. Of course, we have the animals overpopulation problem, duck, deer, and geese. Seal hunters, here's something in the news. They are coming back with some, some aggressive tactics here. Uh, here's something that I was interested in in the Northwoods call. The MUCC's president ignites protest. My name was mentioned in this article. We've got to talk about that. And related to this, Sierra Club questions DNR's budget as well as population debate divides Sierra Club. Now, you know what this means? Well, I won't get into that in this show, but I have a slant as to what this means, this division. That's the subject I'm going to tackle next week, this environmental hunting and fishing sportsman rift. About time this came about, that's my opinion, and we'll talk about that next week because this is an item in the news. And here's the news that a lot of sportsmen wait for. Our guides report, Matt Radzilowski called around the state, found out there is still some ice fishing, some crazy precarious ice fishing, but the news basically is steelhead in the steelhead streams, Ludington, getting one to two per angler, according to Bill at Just Fishing Bait and Tackle. Lakeland Outfitter says uh, they're getting steelhead and browns off the pier. They're getting perch limits from six to ten inches. Best chance at Saugatuck says uh, the fishing conditions haven't been good because of the high muddy water. South Haven, uh, fair perch fishing, but look at the temperature, 35, 36 degree water. Pretty darn cold. We found that around the state. Over here in the Detroit River, uh, they're getting perch and pike at Crystal Bay, but that cold water has, has slowed the walleye fishing down Lake St. Clair. Uh, they're getting some fair perch fishing and walleye is slow, but they're hand landing them though in the Detroit River, right out of Lake St. Clair. Lexington, uh, Rolland at Nats says the fishing is slow because of the water conditions, and the cold and the turbulence. Linwood, right there, they're getting some perch. This is in the cuts. This is not in Saginaw Bay. Uh, steelhead are, is good up in Tawas here. Now, Wellman's at Oscoda, just north of Tawas, says they are getting limits of nice steelhead there in the Osabo River. Uh, Pilgrim Village. Over in Cadillac, steelhead fishing has been slow at Tippy Dam here on the Manistee River because of the weather. Uh, up here at Indian River, they're getting some steelhead in the Bear River. Bucks at Rockport, Alpena area says the walleye are fair off the wall there in Thunder Bay. Now, cross the bridge, you get up to Drummond Island. Uh, again, the perch fishing is slow because of the cold water, but rabbit hunting, excellent on the plains. Yes, they have plains on Drummond Island. Not the Great Plains, they're little teeny plains, but, but they do have plains there. Manuskong Bay, fishing is slow because of the weather, according to Greg at Harry's Place, but this is ice fishing. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Over here at Bayshore Bait and Tackle, Gladstone, Salmon, and Splake are good at Stonington. They're getting some steelhead here as well. Marquette, whitefish off the break wall. Some coho uh, in Houghton. Fishing is slow because of the weather in the Keweenaw Peninsula. Antonagon, it's again uh, slow, but the rabbit hunting, good because of lack of snow. But take a look. I mean, they do have some snow up there in the western UP. Not a lot in the UP and in the northern lower, but it, this is, geez, this, this snow is going fast with the warm weather. Unsafe ice throughout most of the UP and the lower peninsula, except in the very east end. They're going out with cars still in Manuskong Bay. I don't recommend it, but I do recommend these weekend events on our outdoor calendar. <music>
This Sunday, Professor Finns and I will be at the Camper and RV Show at the Grand Traverse Civic Arena in Traverse City to answer questions and talk about outdoor issues. The Camper Show runs Friday through Sunday. Now, we've decided to concentrate our activities at the Practical Sportsman Museum on the first Saturday of each month. So, starting April 4th, we'll begin our Get Involved Saturdays. Outside, you'll find sporting dog puppies. I'll have the list of breeds next week if the owners will just call in before Tuesday. There's no charge to display. We'll also have several free workshops on Saturday the 4th. Bath wildlife artist Nick von Frankenheisen will give free wildlife art lessons to youngsters. In one hour, he'll teach kids how to draw bears. We'll have Nick on next week's show. Also, Professor Finns will give seminars on the basics of spring fishing as a family activity. That's Get Involved Saturday, April 4th at the museum, and it's free. Details are on our website. I am ready for some spring fishing. I'm really ready for some summer fishing, but I'll take the spring fishing first. Enjoy yourself. Get outdoors this weekend. It's a great place to be. We'll see you back here next week. Spooky fish to, uh, to haul out of a Michigan lake. What, what lake was this? This is a local gravel pit. Local gravel pit where there's somebody in the area who has a rather twisted sense of humor. What kind of fish is this? This is a black piranha. Very nice. Do many people swim in that gravel pit? Not that I know of. <laughs> ah, that's weird. Look at that, the mouth on that baby. I, you know, they don't have apparently tremendous teeth, but I guess they can just rip the flesh right off your bones. Yeah. So uh, somebody must have planted this in there, huh? Yeah, it probably got too big for their aquarium and just dumped it in. Very nice. You know, these things, do you suppose they live through the winter? Probably just dumped it in the, in the spring, and then I caught it in about June. Hmm. What'd you catch it on? Um, on a minnow with a bobber from shore, about four feet under the bobber. I was fishing with my cousin Adam, and he really didn't hit it. He just kind of ran with it. He didn't take the bobber under, just slid around. And I set the hook. He got in the weeds, pulled him up, jumped out of the air, got him in, and then the hook got off. But nope. he was on land. Okay, so he was on the land. Was he like snapping his little mouth? He was just flopping around. Did you pick him up? No. Did you know what it was? I thought it was a sheep head. But uh, it's, it's not one that you'd want to, you know, like lip, put your thumb in there. Ooh, that would be a surprise. When did you find out it was a piranha? We took it to a pet shop and they said it was a black piranha. Hmm. Did they say that that was kind of dangerous to have someone around in a gravel pit? Yeah, and somebody else caught one in there, too. An inch bigger. An inch bigger? Mm -hmm. My, I imagine there's dog bones and, and that's strewn all over the bottom. That is, that is kind of spooky. Yeah. Well, it, what did the, you, the DNR knows about this? We didn't no? tell them or nothing. It's too good. You didn't tell them? It's too good a fishing lake. We don't want them to come in there and destroy the rest of the fish that's in there. Because the, the kids... Hold it. The, ki it. the kids fish there every day. Him and his buddies, they go there, and, and they're always catching bluegills and bass. Huh. So we didn't say anything to the DNR because we don't want them to come in there and poison the lake, and poor kids won't have any place to go fishing, you know? Well, there's another alternative. What's that? You could invite him to come swimming. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's bad. That's really bad. That I'm just, just making a joke. That's all there is to it. Well, anyway, we do have a, a very strange fish here. And uh, golly, Ryan, I don't know what to say. You're quite a well-rounded fisherman to catch fish that aren't even on the list. Yep. Way to go. Congratulations. Ryan Wynn, Bill Wynn. Super.